Um, I'm going to try to talk to you about, uh, um, about two things. I actually believe greatly in the value of uh, uh, mentorship. Uh, uh, I think uh, I am what I am uh, uh, because I've had great mentors uh, all my life, uh, right from my childhood days. Uh, and even today, I've been an extraordinary beneficiary of uh, being shaped by uh, people I've had the opportunity to bounce a lot of things uh, uh, up gets. Um, but today's talk is actually about something else. Um, it's about uh, not following what uh, my mentors have told me to do. Um, it's about following your heart. Um, and I'm going to tell you three very uh, quick instances in my life when I've gone and done exactly uh, the opposite of what my mentors have told me to do. Um, and in uh, that, uh, hopefully, I think. Uh, uh, there might be some uh, lessons uh, for all of you on the importance of uh, combining really uh, the head with the heart uh, whenever you're faced with important uh, decisions that you need to make. Uh, I was really a young uh, uh, kid uh, when I was in the US uh, and the fashionable thing when you finished your MBA uh, when I did in 1993 uh, uh, I was very fortunate. I went on a scholarship to do my MBA. Um, I didn't have any encumbrances. Uh, the thing to do at that point in time was to live the great American dream. Um, and that's what everybody encouraged me to do. All my mentors encouraged me that, you know, hey, uh, you come from a middle class family, uh, take up a job, um, you know, uh, build your life uh, in the US. and. Uh, that's the consistent piece of advice I got from all my mentors. Everybody I uh, really cared about told me to do that. Um, it was actually a point of time when um, India was uh, uh, in a very interesting place. It was uh, almost uh, bankrupt as a nation. We were pledging our goal. But it was also uh, really promising because uh, we were just uh, going through this uh, period of liberalization. Uh, I was actually very... Uh, ambitious as a person, um, and I felt that uh, I could pursue this uh, great American dream, but I would really be a big fish, uh, uh, you know, small fish in a big pond. Uh, but on the other hand, if I decided to come back to India uh, armed with an MBA, uh, I'd actually really differentiate myself in a very different pool of uh, uh, talent, and that, that somehow to me was uh, an interesting uh, possibility. I also felt the, that uh, Socially, I would be much, much more uh, adaptable to back home. Uh, I cared a lot more about relationships. Uh, I still do. Um, and so I decided to do the really unusual thing of uh, coming back to India in uh, uh, 1993. Uh, when I came back, uh, virtually each and every person I met uh, asked me the question why. Uh, I remember every Every person I met uh, asked me, why did you really choose to do this? It was an uh, extremely unusual uh, choice that I made. Uh, every uh, prospective employer I made uh, met actually uh, questioned the decision to come back. Um, but I was fortunate I got uh, all the job opportunities that I uh, wanted to get. Uh, eventually started up a career at uh, uh, DSP Merrill Lynch. It wasn't DSP Metal at that point in time for the company called DSP Financial Consultants. Um, but it was a very unusual decision to make to come back to India. It ended up being the most sensible thing I could have done. Uh, in the US, I would have, I guess I would have probably um, landed up, uh, you know, rising up and being probably some one guy amongst uh, millions. Um, I had the opportunity instead to participate in uh, building of a uh, a uh, great uh, financial services firm landed up being the number one investment bank in the country. I joined at the bottom. I landed up right at the top. And, uh, you know, dial forward uh, 14 years, um, I found myself at the top of this investment bank uh, in my mid 30s uh, running it. And that's the second time in my life that uh, I had the opportunity to, uh, you know, go against the grain of all my mentors. Um, you know, when I started my career, I had uh, 
uh, I'd set myself two major objectives. Uh, one was uh, to make a crore uh, of savings in my life. Uh, and the second is to run a company by the time I was uh, 40. I was really fortunate that I started running a company when I was in my mid-30s. Um, and <coughs> fortunately, if you happen to be in the financial services industry, you could be a monkey, but you would, you would make a crore <laughs> if, you were, you know, if you were at the top of it. Um, and so uh, when I was in my mid-30s, running uh, you know, a DSP Financial Consultants, which then became DSP Merrill Lynch, um, I somehow actually felt completely empty. Um, I didn't actually know uh, for many, many months I went through this period where I actually felt uh, a complete lack of purpose uh, with what I was doing. Uh, my guru was, uh, or and still continues to be, a man called Himendra Kothari, uh, who was my chairman, and I went to him and started talking to him about uh, about the sense of emptiness which he uh, couldn't quite understand. He thought it was male menopause, which had hit me 15 years too early. Um, and, you know, so he tried all kinds of things, uh, you know, uh, but unfortunately nothing worked. So I told him, I said, you know, I think uh, I should maybe retire um, and uh, do something else with my life. I went and he said, no, I talk to all your other ventures. So I went and spoke to four or five other people and they said, I think I need to give up running an investment bank. Um, so I was in my mid-50s and every mentor told me, you know, you're going to be crazy, but I decided to actually leave the only thing that I knew how to do, which was running an investment bank, against the advice of all my mentors. And I moved to private equity, a career that I knew nothing about uh, at that point of time. Um, so again, that's uh, a piece of thing that I did, which was really unusual. From being good at something, really good at something, I went to start for, with a complete clean slate uh, into uh, uh, private equity. I eventually started paying capital. I was terrible at private equity for the first few years. I made tons of mistakes, um, really bad ones, looked like a sucker, um, but eventually learned how to uh, you know, uh, do investing. Uh, today, fortunately, our firm is one of the leaders uh, in the space. Um, and then again, the third time I, uh, you know, had the opportunity to uh, go against the grain of all my mentors is once the firm was built and uh, I had a great, great team, um, I felt that, you know, uh, I had been over the last 10, 15 years spending more and more time in the, in the social sector. I felt the time had come to actually spend perhaps even more time in the social sector. So I went and again spoke to a lot of my mentors and said, you know, should I move full time into the social sector? Um, and again, people told me that you've got to be, you know, crazy. I, uh, my, you know, partner in, uh, in all of this is my wife. Uh, and I told her, I said, you know, maybe it's time to make the move. She said, what makes you think that your advice is more valuable than your money? Um, <laughs> so I th this time I actually decided to take her take, uh, you know, go, go against the advice of my, of my mentors, but follow, at least uh, respect my partner's advice. And so I decided to uh, give up working full time and uh, start working part time uh, for Bain Capital. I now chair the business, uh, uh, but I don't work full time in, in private equity. But in each of these three cases, I went uh, against the grain of, uh, of advice that I got and went with my heart. Um, but I can tell you, and uh, most of the time I tell people that um, take all the advice that you want, uh, but at the end of the day there is a true knot that all of us have uh, inside us. It's really important enough to get all the advice uh, that you get to go back and uh, think for yourself and follow your heart because you have to really get up every morning and do what you want to do. And it's only you who know each, uh, each of yourselves the best. Uh, so it's most important to follow your heart. Uh, thank you so much for hearing me.